<sighs> so much, so much. Chapter 18 of John. This is really interesting. After he had said all of this, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden into which he went with his disciples. Judas the traitor knew this place also, since Jesus had often met his disciples there. So Judas brought the cohort, co cohort to this place together with the guards sent by the chief priests and Pharisees, all which, all with lanterns and torches and weapons. Well, Jesus knew they were looking for him. Jesus wasn't a dumb guy. He was a leading people. People were willing to give their lives for this guy. He was like the Bin Laden of his time. I mean, they've cleaned the story up. I would really love to know what the true story was. Sorry. I just think like that. You know, I love these story behind the story. I mean, I don't read the Inquirer, but because, I mean, that's bullshit. But, I mean, it's that shit's funny as hell. And I'm not taking this too serious. But interesting. Just sounds like such a convenient story. Think about this. Think about it. I mean, this is a pretty cynic. Uh, we're really wise on stories now, you know, more than they were then. And, you know, we've seen these things repeated again. We've seen people that when they died, we just couldn't accept it. And we were telling stories how we saw them at 7 Elevens. And I'm not just talking Elvis. There's, I mean, Bruce Lee and Jim, James Dean and God, so many. You know, I mean, I remember seeing Bill Bixby, a guy rec rec you know, respected, uh, doing a documentary serious all about about how they were seeing sightings of Elvis. And yes, that son of a bitch is alive. He pulled a fast one. I kept thinking, what if Jesus pulled a fast one? Anyway, so they're in the garden anyway, and and Judas knows about where they're going to be. Judas knows where they're going to be. Jesus told him to go and betray him. Now, if I were like Bin Laden or somebody, maybe somebody less famous than him, because we don't, they didn't have video then. They might have heard about this guy, but not necessarily know what he looked like. I mean, why are they sending a guy to identify him if they've been seeing him daily? And all these Pharisees arguing with him and stuff and debating him and wanting to arrest him and at every opportunity and where he's almost been stoned a few times. I'm not going to start citing all these sources, but I, I should, but I'm lazy. Uh, sorry, I'm rambling. A little drunk. Uh, anyway, it's just very convenient here. Um, all right. We're still in chapter 18 of John. Knowing everything that was going to happen to him, Jesus came forward and said, Who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. Now Judas the traitor was standing among them. Now, Judas doesn't give him a kiss in John. It's only in the other three books. Just, just saying. When Jesus said this, I am he. They moved back and fell on the ground. I mean, Jesus is very different than John. He's kind of, a, he's more militant. I mean, the way he cleared the temple, cat of nine tails. <laughs> very different. And they started that at the beginning of the book of John instead of at the end where you're thinking that's what put the noose on around his neck. Uh, sorry. Uh, they fell on the ground. They were so scared of him. They had all the weapons and torches and what was he? Frankenstein monster? <laughs> Dracula? Uh. When Jesus said this, I am he, they fell on the ground. Now looking, uh, now asking them a second time, who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said, I have told you that I am he. If I am the one you are looking for, let these others go. Chapter 18. 
Wouldn't it be really a tricky thing to do? Uh, wouldn't this be really sneaky? I'm not saying it happened, but it could have happened. It could have happened. Think about Bin Laden, man. He's got people putting bombs on themselves. <laughs> they have so much faith. They'll do anything they're asked. Drink the Kool-Aid. Now, Jesus had that kind of sway. I mean, he wanted to be king. That's what they nailed above his cross, because that was really what he was after. Yeah, he's a king. <laughs> he's dead, and he's really dead. I'm sorry, he's really dead. I'm sorry to tell you this. He's dust. They found him in 1980, and you guys covered it up, you sons of bitches. Fucking archaeologists. Looking to confirm the truth they already know. God, I should show you the cover of the book I have. Uh, by a very brave individual. And, boy, they covered it up from 1980. Well, anyway, I'm sorry. I'm drunk. Uh, where was I? You know how, God, people will put a bomb on themselves. Now, I'm thinking, what if I were Jesus, and I knew everybody wanted to get me, and I wanted to be king. I want to be king like King David, Solomon, you know, a lot, Hezekiah, a live king. God's king. Just let me survive this, and I think I got a trick up my sleeve, so... You know, people are expendable. You know, remember uh, in the first Conan movie with, uh, you know, James Earl Jones, where he calls, "Come here," and the little, and the the mesmerized cult follower lady walks right off a cliff and falls to her death. And he goes, "See, that's power." Well, Jesus was like that. He was just another David Koresh. And what if he told one of his disciples? I need you to take a bullet for me. They don't really know who I am. And I sent one of my other guys to tell him which guy to arrest. So which one of you guys will volunteer to pretend you're me? Since they don't really know what I look like, apparently. Since they need a guy to come. They need a guy to come and identify me. So what if somebody else went and said, sure, I'm the one. I'm the guy. Let these other guys go. And there's Jesus going. We're not going to forget about you, dude. This is, you're going to have like all these virgins and shit waiting for you. Well, this guy was very reluctant to talk among them. Maybe because they did, he didn't want them to recognize his voice. That's why he didn't have much to say, you know. Are you the king of the Jews? You said so. And they beat the crap out of him. They said they beat the crap out of him, even before the priest saw him. Now, what if they messed his face up? And what if he kind of looked like Jesus enough? You know, Saddam Hussein had all these doubles. We don't really know the true story of Jesus, and I wish we did, because that would be fascinating. I'll bet it would be a movie of the week. Uh... This guy went to his death. And then later on, we're seeing people are seeing Jesus, but they don't recognize him at first. Was he in disguise? That would have been a wise thing to do when you're walking on the street, meeting a couple of guys walking into town going, they're going, yeah, Jesus is dead. And they don't recognize him until he reveals himself to himself. Could he have been disguised so that he wouldn't be arrested? Now, I don't know. I don't know any more than all that, but I mean, and I don't know. Maybe somebody has said this before me. I, I haven't heard this one, but they probably have. You know, Bogdan 21 will probably point it out. Or, you know, Ancient Atheists, one of those great guys. You know, like. um, anyway, I think I said all I had to say. Uh, it's reasonable doubt. Anybody that knows a law out there? You know, you know what reasonable, reasonable doubt means, right? So I don't need to say any more. Enough said. I think we need to bury this guy.
because they did it in 1980. They did it under cover of dark. So we'll never know if he was a, if this Jesus son of Joseph tomb with all the names that match up with the book of Mark. We don't know if that person in there was crucified or not because they buried him and we never got to find out. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Peace out.